going everyone welcome back to the channel so glad you're here and this is going to be the first video of 2023 i got my new gopro 11 here so hopefully i have better audio and better video quality and uh, it'll just be an upgrade to the channel in general but today is going to be diagnosed in the p1211 code i've had on the truck since i've owned it it's been 556 days since i've owned this truck yes i counted and it's still plaguing me with that problem so i'm going to go uh, probably put a timestamp down at the bottom of the screen so we're you can just go directly to me working on the truck. But if you want to kind of have the backstory, give me just a couple seconds here. I did an air pressure test on the injectors. I didn't know what I was doing back then. It was about eight months ago when I did that. I didn't close the IPR valve and that basically allowed air to go past the IPR valve and not to where it should have gone to the injectors. Um, I didn't know what I didn't know. And so I did that test again. I'll throw the footage in here now. All right, guys. So I got you a close up here of the IPR valve. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unplug the positive from the battery here. And I'm going to reconnect it. And off again. So once I was able to close the IPR valve, still I wasn't able to hear anything at all in the injectors. Also ran the injectors and with the valve cover off, oil was coming out of each injector return spout. So that's a good sign. Another test I did off camera and I'll show that footage in a second. I put that hose into the ICP port. Running good, right around 30 mile an hour. There's 45, still at 1000 PSI. I have to slow down because of this curve coming up. I'm gonna try this again. Okay, here's some throttle. Really hard shift. Still staying at a thousand PSI. Here's 40 mile an hour, still at a thousand. Creeping up a little, here's 45 mile an hour, 2000 RPM, nothing. Check engine lights on and it's just not wanting to climb. And even though the truck ran like crap, the pressure that the high pressure oil pump was giving me was only about a thousand PSI. Now that could mean two things and that's why I'm, uh, it's led me here today. Either my high pressure oil pump is damaged internally and it's not physically capable of reaching over a thousand PSI, or the high pressure oil pump is fine, but I'm getting a, a blow by condition to where my injector O-rings can't handle past a thousand PSI. These injector O-rings and this high, jet, uh, high pressure oil pump should well easily handle 3000 PSI. That's what they're designed to, to hold at wide open throttle. So something's wrong here. And that's the test that I'm going to be doing today to figure out which is it. High pressure oil pump, injector O-rings, and we're going to go from there. So sit back, relax, guys, and hopefully I can figure this out today. All right, so first test I'm going to do is I'm going to check the IPR valve here. This was recently replaced by the previous owner as well as the high pressure oil pump. Now the test that I want to do is I want to make sure that these wires that are coming from the PCM, this yellow wire and a red wire, have enough continuity to activate the coil on the IPR valve. So if we come over here and remove these towels, it's been raining for a couple days, so it's just keeping water out of the way. Right here we have the IDM. Here's another wiring harness that I assume would go into the cab. And here is the PCM. So all these wires here go to the computer brain and I need to look up two. All right, so this is the wiring diagram for a 96 73 power stroke. Now this was a manual transmission a wiring diagram but from what i've seen and from what i've tested off camera it'll work for the automatic as well now what we need to do here is go right here to the injector pressure regulator the ipr valve and there's two wires coming out of that connector so we need to look for two wires here right here it says yellow slash red which is the yellow wire on there and then the red wire here so this is the pcm harness that'll plug in to the uh, the computer and these represent all the wires that are coming out the back of it so the two that i need to focus on is pin number 83 and pin number 71. this red wire goes all the way up to this relay 
that goes all the way up to this fuse that's hot at all times it says up here I know the writing's small and the camera's not probably picking up every little letter but trust me guys pin number 83 and pin number 71 is what we need to find first so in order to test these wires I bought myself some 030 MIG wire and it's really really thin stuff what people usually do or some mistakenly do is they take the connector and they put it through the front side of this wire and harness and you don't want to do that because you could possibly spread out the metal connector that wraps around the pin on the computer here you could have connectivity problems later and you just don't want to do it so what you want to do is back probe it so i'm looking for pin number 83 so 79 80 81 82 83 Sure enough, pin number 83 has a yellow wire with a red stripe down it, just like the IPR valve connector. So I'm going to back probe that. So this is the wiring schematic that was drawn up for me for me to better understand how to do this test. You can see this is where the ECM connects and this is where the IPR connector is. Both are unplugged from the computer and the IPR valve and we're basically just adding wires with a light bulb here just to see if each wire has good positive flow of electricity through both of them. We're testing one wire at a time, but this is basically the schematic if anyone wants to do this themselves. I got myself some 1157 bulbs and a socket for that light bulb. And both these have wires on the end that I can run alligator clips and it'll just be easier to attach these alligator clips to the MIG wire or the battery, whatever I need to do. All right, so following this wiring diagram here, I have the IPR valve connector back probed I'm gonna run that to ground here and I got wires going every which way so I'm gonna try and best ex explain it here then the MIG wire that's been back probed into the connection I had to kind of jam further up in there to get a good connection and that's connected to this light bulb here so when I touch this to the positive it should illuminate and there we go. All right, so let's just put it on there. And I just want a good 30 second test. I don't want to see this flicker, get dim, get brighter, duller, doesn't matter. I just want it to stay like this for about 30 seconds. So I'm going to call this wire good and I'm going to move on to the red wire now. All right, so the yellow wire with the red stripe, that's done has positive flow through it, the light bulb was illuminated for an ex extended period of time, and I have no doubts about that wire. So now, same test, we're just gonna switch to the other wire, this red wire here. So the new wire I gotta find is pin number 78. So there's four rows here essentially, and on the end here, the plastic, it says 78. So I know that this pin right here is 78 and I'm looking for 71 so I got to count that way. So 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, here's 71 and sure enough it's a red wire just like the wiring diagram says. So take my MIG wire, back probe it, Let me take it out of the yellow wire and stick it in to where the red wire goes here. All right, so just like that last time, the back of the IPR connector wire is going to ground. Cram that in there. Should have gotten bigger alligator clips. I really didn't want these battery terminals connected. And then we'll take the back of the PCM and run this to our light bulb. So again, if I did everything right and everything's connected and back probed properly, this light bulb should illuminate. There you have it guys, fully illuminated, not going dim. So both those wires are good. So all that light bulb test was doing, it was just testing the, if there is continuity between the PCM wiring all the way to the IPR. I wanted to make sure there was no shorts, there's no uh, corrosion, just make sure those wires are good and then we can move on to the next and test. And that's what we're gonna be doing pump. here. Now again, I have my IPR valve what pigtail connected to the battery here soon so I can apply 12 volts to that and it'll close it off next I have these fittings here now these fittings go directly into the pump I think the newer super duties might have quick connect quick disconnect oil fittings these were just threaded on I didn't want to remove these because these 
come with the pump and there's a bunch of springs in here and detents and so the soft metal as well i didn't want to over torque these by any chance or i just didn't want to go into it so i have both oil lines disconnected this one goes to the driver's side this one goes to the passenger side and basically what i'm going to be doing is i got myself a 5000 psi gauge i'm doing one bank at a time so when i'm testing this bank which i believe is the passenger side i'll be plugging off this one when i'm testing this side i'll be blocking off this one so just one at a time and then again while i'm having 12 volts applied uh, from the battery there to close off the system all right ipr has 12 volts Go ahead and crank it over for five seconds. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right, so right there we got about 3,500 PSI. Okay, one more time. Okay. Perfect. Okay, ready to run the other side of the pump here. Now, this is blocked off. That was no trouble at all. But it was so hard to get in here because of this plastic connector here. So I had to put on a 90 and then a 35 degree up to this hose here. Can I apply 12 volts again to this battery? All right, go ahead. We'll wait about five or 10 seconds and we'll do that one more time just to get an accurate reading. Okay, one more time. All right, that's good. Excellent. All right, so I'm gonna stop the work right there. Now, what does that tell me? It tells me that the high pressure oil pump is capable of making over uh, 1,000, 1,500 PSI when I did the road test. Now, when I did the road test, I was only getting 1,000 PSI because there's something inside the oil system that is causing a blow-by condition to where it reaches a certain PSI and then it can't hold any more PSI. And that's very evident of injector O-rings. And that's the two things I was trying to test here is it's either a high-pressure oil pump that can't make the pressure or an injector O-ring that can't hold the pressure. And I just proved myself that the high-pressure oil pump can make over 3,400 PSI, which is right where it should be. Uh, I think anything over 3000 PSI is a very healthy pump. Um, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact standards or the, the specs, but it's in the good, uh, good category to say the least. So guys, that's it. Um, this testing is done with for now. This was kind of a two part series. One was going to be testing and kind of finding the problem. Next video is going to be fixing the problem. I'm going to be diving into the valve covers, pulling all eight injectors out one at a time, checking the O-rings. And if I see a bad O-ring, replace it. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned to next week's video. After I owned this truck for almost two years, I'm finally getting down to the problem. So I'm excited. Take care guys. See you in the next one.